Hey everybody, it's Brian Burns. Welcome to this episode of Career Advice Hacking, how to find your dreams through your career. Today I want to talk about five things that managers just hate and things that we tend to overlook or just don't think they're as important as our managers tend to believe that they are. And some, but it's easy to become uh, slacking at these things. Uh, for whatever reason, we can rationalize them any way we want. But the key thing to understand is that our managers don't view it that way. Uh, number one is being late. Uh, now, this it depends on your job. But if, if there is a set time to show up and you're showing up, you know, even one minute late, that can annoy a lot of people. And, you know, yeah, sure, there's all the kinds of things like traffic and the kids and the weather and all, there's a million reasons why. And, oh, you stay late. Now, what ends up happening in managers' heads is they don't care about that. And I'll tell you a story. I had this one job where the traffic and the commute was just brutal. It wasn't geographically far. It was probably... Less than 30 minutes with no traffic, but with traffic, it could be an hour, hour and a half. So to judge it right, you had to a lot for over an hour and a half. And then you're either showing up anywhere from 30 minutes early to an hour early. And it was the type of job where there wasn't much to do unless uh, you were there at that time. It was a sales job. It was getting on the phone and uh, just pounding it. Uh, and this was a long time ago, one of the earliest jobs in my career. And it was a flaky company and the managers, not my, my direct manager was fine with it uh, because I also traveled and I rationalized it. It's like, well, I'm traveling every other week and that's, you know, basically a hundred percent of my time away from my life. You know, granted, I'm not working a hundred percent of my time, but you know, it's, getting up at 6 a.m. to hit a flight, uh, then, you know, staying over in a crappy hotel and a rent-a-car. And you, you're, you're bugging me about being, coming in at 15 minutes late. And I always stayed later that day, but it, it bugged, not my manager, but his manager. And it kind of annoyed me a little bit, but I, I kind of understand. And what ends up happening is once you become a manager, you kind of understand these things from both sides. And what really you're saying when you're late is that my time is more important than yours. That's what people are react. That's their reaction to it. And I, I tell this story about the one time I hired somebody who was late for an interview and I regretted it because it was like, if you can't be on time for an interview, which is the, the most important meeting before you get the job, meaning that if you're not on time, you're telling the person who's interviewing you that you don't really care about this enough to allot or manage your time properly. That person turned into a nightmare. And he was such a great referral from a friend of mine whose opinion I trusted that I, I, I went anyway with hiring him. And he was great from a performance standpoint when he performed, but he would just go off the grid for time periods, not show up, misrepresent himself to clients, and there was always an excuse. And you really got to the point where, like, there's something wrong here. And all of a sudden, everyone was whining about him, and I, I got promoted to be the manager. So now I had to manage the guy indirectly. His direct manager was out in California, and, you know, he didn't care. All he wanted was to check boxes and had his own life. And I had to rely on the person. I was the consumer of this person's uh, labor, and my team was, and they were all whining about him. And I just, I shook my head. I go, you know, the, the, the key thing, they, he broke that trust that if you can't show up on time, it's the first level of trust is showing up on time. And people say it's no big deal. And, and in the grand scope of things, you would think it's no big deal to you. To the manager, it's a huge deal. And so much of life is just showing up. You know, Woody Allen says it's 80% of life. And, and sometimes it, it is because you're there. You're showing a conscientiousness. You're showing a caringness. And some other people may not be. And that is a big part of life. And a lot of managers just like the person who's there you know, the first in the morning, last in the evening. If you do that alone, 
you're, you're going to move yourself up and you're actually doing something productive while you're there. Uh, and today, it, it seems a lot less important because we can tend to work anywhere. Uh, the, the idea for me to actually commute to an office seems so ridiculous because I've, I've literally worked out of my home uh, for 15 years, you know, working for other people and working for myself. The idea of, you know, even when I, I could walk to work, I had a, an office five blocks from my house and I, and I, I would shake my head. I go, why am I here uh, just for an, I get an internet connection at home and it was like this gradual thing where people were like, in yeah, there's structure and there's separation. And I get that. And sometimes you have to meet with people, but even today we, we, we meet at Starbucks or, or some, you know, for lunch and those things are actually better. And, you know, the idea of, uh, you know, personal time and, and work time has grayed. A lot of people just, you know, don't check their work email during the weekend. I do. I try and keep, Sunday, uh, completely off, but I work for myself. So, uh, you know, the only person who's relying on me is me and my team. And I, I don't want to let me down and I don't want to let my team down. So number one is show up on time, show up early. If you're not five minutes early, you're late. You've got to set that pattern. And if you really want to excel, show up a half hour early, you know, just be there, be prepared. Because when people say, oh, we start work at nine, they don't mean you come in the door at nine. They mean you are wherever you need to be ready to work. And I, I see this all the time. So I see it like at Starbucks where they, they say they open it. You know, I used to go there at 5 a.m. And I'd be there at 5 a.m. And, and they're kind of like opening the door, turning the lights on at 5 a.m. Well, I bet the company means no, no, no. You've got everything up and ready. And they're like, oh, the coffee will be ready in about 15, 20 minutes. And I'm like, oh. And, and literally, I would be like, you know, I'd read Howard Schultz's book about, you know, oh, the smell of this and every little detail. And I'd be like, open on time. If, if it's you're not going to be open and ready to do business until 520, say 520. Now, I might be a little bit uptight about that, but I, I, I broke that habit of uh, needing that coffee first thing in the morning. Okay, number two is whiners. Now, what a lot of employees do is they keep pushing things back on their manager, and this annoys the hell out of most managers. They say, oh, I can't do this because of this, oh, this is slow, that... Our job is to work within the system. Now, we can constructively uh, comment and suggest about making better changes. And I get it. Today, we've got so much data entry, and if it's not in this, it doesn't matter type mentality. And the thing is, it, it doesn't really matter if it's in there. Whatever is happening is happening. And our job as human beings and employees is to make sure the things that need to get done get done, and we somehow account for them within the system, whatever that system is whether it's expense reports, uh, you know, CRM system, uh, whatever systems the company relies on, you, you have to work within that. Uh, you can try and automate it. Whining about it is not working, and managers hate that. They hate whiners. They hate people who are fighting the system. And believe me, I was one of the worst. I was like the 100% on get the results and everything else will take care of itself, kind of lone wolf type guy. And that could carry me a long time until I couldn't produce. And then they're, they're like, well, wait a second, and you're not doing this. Because people want to manage you, not lead you, not support you. They want to like check boxes and count things and look at dashboards and that's just the way managers think. And, you know, when I did become a manager, I, I kind of said, I'm not going to do that. I never had meetings with people that didn't have alignment just so that they could, you know, I could do it all at once and make everybody suffer through everybody else's discussion where it was completely irrelevant to them. And I've had managers do that. And it's it's hard being an employee. It is. But Remember that your manager is your customer. I, I've been bad at it. I was kind of a manager hater, and I, I learned it. 
And that's why I went out on my own. And, it, and it, it's just expensive, you know, because you get, it takes a couple of years to build up a business, to build up a, a reputation, to build up something in a t- completely uh, different space where nobody knows you and all of a sudden build an audience. So number two is don't bother whining. Number three is the staller. The staller is somebody who runs into a hiccup and they just stop. Oh, this isn't working today. Oh, I can't get on the, to the Wi-Fi. Oh, the door's locked. Or, oh, oh, the key's not working. And, you know, I went through this. I, I was an investor in a small business. And it was like it was a, a physical key to get into the business. And the other person, the manager, would hand out these keys to everyone and wouldn't test the keys before they tried them. And so you put in this policy, it's like, you test it, make sure it works. You give it to the person, they test it to make sure it works. Because literally eight out of 10 times, uh, the first time the person would try the key, they call me up saying the key's not working. And I go there, I go, give me the key. I put the key in and it would work fine. And all of a sudden you were like, you know, all you had to do was try it one more time in their mind was, I am a genius. Everyone else is an idiot. Uh, the key's not working. Uh, the way you're using the key didn't work or gave, gave you more resistance than you think. And then instead of trying something else or just try it again or being a little bit patient, you panic and you ruin the whole experience for you, the customer, and me. And I've seen this so many times that the people are like, uh, I can't do my job because somebody else isn't doing their job. And the thing is, you may be right. You may be 100% right. And believe me, some of those keys before you put this policy in place didn't work, right? So it was the manager's fault. They made keys. And if you make 10 keys, uh, probably two of them uh, aren't going to fit right. So you don't give it to somebody unless you try it. So you have confidence that the key does work. <laughs> and it was just this insane, I, I literally, you know, I lost it with this person. It's like, uh, in what world is this acceptable that you would not test this before you give it to somebody when you're not there? And it was just annoying. And I see it all the time. What, what managers want is you to figure it out. Like when that per- manager gives the key, the, even the employee should be the owner of that responsibility. It was like, let me try this while you're here to make sure I know. And people, what do people do? They assume everything works simply. Just bingity, bangity, boom. You know, I've got a friend who's like, looks at the whole world as it should just be bingity, bangity, boom. And then when it isn't, he gets all upset and it's always someone else's fault. Even though he went there during rush hour, even though it was raining out, he found that there was traffic. Oh, who would have thought there'd be traffic at rush hour? And all of a sudden, why are all these people in my way? And it's just this owning it, finding a way of getting your job done around the situation, anticipate things that aren't going to work, understand how to make sure the Wi-Fi works, understand the passwords for everything, have somebody there to walk you through all the systems that work together. What typically goes wrong? If those things go wrong, what do you do? How do you get on YouTube and search for how to what to do in this case? And like when you're an entrepreneur, when you have like no real support system and you have to get everything to work together, and even though you may be technical enough, you know, you have to figure it out. And you can't just say, ah, I can't do my job because of this, because it doesn't matter. You don't get paid. Okay. Number four is the, is the gossip. The people who talk behind each other's back, badmouth the company and, uh, you know, spread rumors, uh, try and elicit too much about what's going on behind closed doors. I mean, it, it's good to keep your, your ear to the, the rail as far as like when something good or bad's coming down. But it's not good to, you know, be talking about people, especially their personal lives, especially your manager, especially using time during the day 
to uh, spread this stuff around. Uh, managers hate it. Why? Because first, it's kind of destroying the culture of the company. Two, it's taking up time. Three, it's demotivating not just you, it's other people. And I get it. it it's easy to do. It's hard to avoid. And it's a, it's a trap. It's funny. I get it. I, I love making fun of stupid, silly things and parroting uh, people and stuff. But at the end of the day, it just has no place at work. Uh, keep it to your personal life and separate those things uh, into your personal life. Number five is the person who's always talking about there's a better company, the grass is greener person. I can do better here. I can do better there. If you can, you should do it. Otherwise, keep it to yourself. <laughs> you know? And you always hear about people getting paid better, better benefits, shorter commutes, better treatment, all of this stuff. If, if you want to go, go. If you don't, keep it to yourself. That's all. And managers hate this. Why? Because, again, you're demotivating other people. You're basically saying you're too good for the place. And you might be. It's all true, but this is the distinction between you doing what works and what's right and you doing what just pops into your head. And, and a lot of people get righteous. I can say what and think what I want. You can. But you have a cause and effect relationship, and you can't blame the effect on your cause. If you caused it, you have to own the effect. Uh, if you don't, you're not going to learn. And I've, too many people just take no responsibility for the things that they cause. And a lot of things in our life we cause, right? We, we decide what we put into our body. We decide what we do with our body. We decide the thoughts we think. And that's a topic in and of itself. And we decide on our attitude. We decide on our level of motivation. All of that is 100% under our control. And so many things about just showing up, smiling, being cooperative, getting the job done, uh, avoiding uh, the negative stuff will get you so far in your career that these things, if you just avoid them, and they're traps, they, they pull you in and they won't let you go and... They're totally deconstructive. Separate. You can do this stuff with your friends and your buddies and your pals during the week and the weekends uh, at night. And don't bring them to work. And Because once you get that reputation for any of these things, it's really hard to shake. And they're just bad habits. I hope you like this. Make sure you're checking out B2B Revenue if you ever want to get into sales. Uh, keep the questions coming. Uh, I love doing this. I love helping people out with their career. Connect up with me on LinkedIn. And we'll see you next time.